I'm Mary Perry, and today I'm here with Dr. Barry Sears, and today we're going to talk about obesity and weight loss drugs. So first off, Dr. Sears, let's talk about what you consider the definition of obesity to be and some of the facts. Well, first of all, obesity is usually defined by BMI. Wrong choice. Obesity is defined as excess body fat. So if we're going to define obesity, we have to say, what is the levels of excess body fat that's medically defined as obesity? Well, for females, it's about 32% body fat. Anything over above that, you're obese. For males, it's about 25%. Now, let's put this in reality. So rather than saying we have 40% of Americans being obese, by using the true marker of obesity, a number of Americans who are obese are probably closer to 50, 60, 65%. We've got a problem. Wow. So, uh, sure. so that's why I had to define our terms. BMI says, I'm okay. Say, you probably aren't okay. Now, uh, let's put this in perspective relative to Ozempic mm -hmm. and the, the weight loss study done on Ozempic. Let's look at now the percent body fat of the people in that study. Okay, it started at about 43%. Well, last time I recollected, 43 is greater than 32 and much greater than 25. So these are not obese individuals. They are hefty obese individuals. So after 68 weeks of injecting yourself with Golgovi, how much did the percent body fat actually decrease? Not that much. It went from 43% to 39%. They're still obese, markedly obese. So say, great guys, I've been injecting this drug for over a year, and I've gone from being super obese just to say, uh, less obese. Not a very mm -hmm. good track record. Uh, right. But in, during that time period, they lost a significant amount. About 40% of the weight loss was lean body mass. And that's the mass you don't want to lose. That's the mass right. of your muscles. It's the mass of your organs, mass of your brain, mass of your uh, bones. So we have to kind of take this Ozempic data and say it's not a miracle cure. It's just basically you went from very obese to slightly less obese. And it's tough because people with obesity, they're looking for these drugs to help them, but yet there's so many risks that are, you know, or um, studies that are coming out on the side effects from it too. So do you want to walk a little bit? I know you just talked about the decline in lean body mass, but what are some of the other risks of going on these medications? Well, one of the first one is really cosmetic. It's called ozempic face. Uh, what happens when you start losing lean body mass, uh, where you see it lo lost first is in the face, saying, oh, I'm, my, everything's shrunken. I had my wrinkles are showing up, saying, well, that's the price of using Ozempic to lose uh, fat. Uh, however, a more serious problem, there's a significant risk of thyroid cancer. Say, so, well, that's not a good idea. I mean, this, yeah. these drugs are not all that safe after all, because they're meant to be lifetime drugs. Then there's also risk of pancreatitis. Remember, these drugs were originally developed to basically stimulate the pancreas to push out more insulin. You stimulate the, the pancreas too much, it becomes inflamed. That's what they called pancreatitis. Then you also get another problem, stomach paralysis and gut paralysis. Everything slows down. And therefore, it's saying, I'm just stuffed. I can't eat. Well, that's true. But that's because uh, you're saying, the brain's saying don't eat. But your stomach says, stop. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Stop. Stop. Give me a break. We talked about the loss of lean body mass. And that doesn't come back quickly. The fat does, but not the lean body mass. And then there's a, another problem of malnutrition. How did you get fat in the first place? Eating too much junk food. Junk food is basically rich in calories and poor in nutrients. And so when people talk, start taking Ozempic, they eat less junk food. Okay, that's good, step in one direction. But it was poor in nutrition to begin with. It's now super poor. In nutrition. So you have a real problem in terms of basically uh, taking significant increases in malnutrition. And you have a, basically another problem. This was developed as a drug for treating diabetes. Diabetes is a much more serious condition than obesity. But Eric says, I want to lose weight. Well, what about the poor diabetic who's trying to just control his blood sugar? Say, they are getting caught in a squeeze. Uh, yes, I like, like the old saying, yes, we have no bananas. Uh, so for the people who really need Ozempic, it's just basically not, not available oftentimes. And finally, the, really the unknown. 
what will be the long-term side effects? No one knows. No one knows. However, right. we're talking about for children using Ozempic, which means they may be on Ozempic for maybe 80 years. Think the side effects are going to show up in 80 years? I think so. Call me crazy. Yeah. And what about those who already have eating disorders? They're going to accelerate those. And so there's a lot of problems there with those Ozempic, which are being sled, uh, pushed under the carpet. But you're, now you're starting to see a lot of TV advertising, especially for uh, the weight loss aspect. So there are some problems we have to address. It's a drug. It has side effects. Yeah, no, it's it's tough. And a lot of people are looking at these as a last resort. You know, they feel like they've tried everything or tried to reduce their calories um, and then to have these risks and side effects and also to be on it, you know, long term. It's tough. Well, here, here's a here's a quick way of weight loss. It's called the Venus the Milo diet. You cut off the right arm and then you cut off the left arm. <laughs> hey, I've lost 30 pounds. Uh, doesn't feel very sustainable. No, no, no. It, it's sustainable. <laughs> Those arms aren't coming back. But, but say, does it make sense? No. All right. So let's get into the reality check. I know you have some other data that you wanted to talk about. Well, this is a recent study done by Blue Cross Blue Shield asking what happens when their, their people start using Ozempic. Well, it turns out about 60% of the people who start Ozempic, for whatever reason, stop before they lose any perceptible a health uh, fat loss that gives rise to any health benefits. And that takes that means you, it means they're stopping the Ozempic before 12 weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. So a lot of people say, I'm taking it. I don't like the side effects. It isn't worth it. Now, of that 60%, about half stopped taking it in the first month. They say, I'm not feeling good. This, I'm, 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 not, I'm not feeling the, uh, the good vibrations I see on the TV ads. Plus, a majority of the prescriptions don't come from specialists. Let's say a diabetologist or an obesity specialist. They come from the, the general practitioner. So write me a prescription. Here it is. Take it down to the drugstore. And so they really have no knowledge of basically the, the complications. And there's this being kind of the, um, the lo local pusher man. So you want it? You got it. And the people who do seem to continue with Ozempic are the ones who really do need it. They're the ones with diabetes. They're the ones with cardiovascular problems. But again, they're being squeezed out by the overweight population. I want to lose weight. And so if you really have a, a really a significant, severe uh, problem like diabetes or heart disease, you may find difficult to find Ozempic to help you control those symptoms. And the younger you are, let's say between ages of 18 to 34, the more likely you are to stop. So these are some of the things that we don't hear about, but Blue Cross is, yeah, our people are telling us they, they're not really happy with this drug because it's, they're not happy campers. And it's tough because then the people that need it, like you said, don't have access to it, which is, which is really tough. So, exactly. What about BMI selection? Well, uh, here's a good rule point. Uh, say, okay, I want to use it. Uh, I don't care if I'm, you know, uh, I want to lose weight. I don't have any chronic disease. Okay, even though you're stealing the Ozempic from those who need it, what would be good criteria? Well, here's one. If your BMI, not a good marker of obesity, uh, is greater than 35, but if you're a BMI of 35, you are big. No question about it. Uh, and you don't have a family history of thyroid cancer, and you're not trying to get pregnant, then consider it. If your BMI is between 27 and 35, which means you're probably obese uh, by the medical definition, you might consider it, but consider the, basically the reality check we went through. And if you're less than a BMI of 27, don't even consider it. Uh, you're actually relatively healthy. You have excess body fat. Okay, it might be unsightly, but it's not that medically dangerous until it raises, rises to a higher level. Now, what's the alternative? Well, the alternative is saying, I want to try it. Good. You might try it and say, uh, inject it uh, as directed four times a week. But now, at the same time, begin following the concept of metabolic engineering. You've got to eat. You can't, uh, you're not going to go without food. So start basically following a, a diet, a metabolic engineering diet, low calorie, but balanced in protein and carbohydrate, enough protein that you will not be losing lean body mass. Do that for three meals at every day. At the end of one month, take your Ozempic down from four injections per month 
to one injection per month. But you now keep following the same metabolic engineering diet. And by month three, it's saying, you know, I probably don't need a stinky Ozempic after all. <laughs> and you're right. Because basically, that's the key of metabolic engineering. It's reprogramming your metabolism to burn fat faster, but also to maintain lean body mass. And this is a study that you and I published seven years ago using basically the components we uh, find in metabolic engineering. Uh, and what do we find? You lost body fat, mm -hmm. but you gained a lean body mass, the holy grail. And then when I, we compared the, uh, the data from the uh, New England Journal study on Ozempic on weight loss, yes, the weight loss was greater in the first six weeks. But then when you look at the fat loss and the uh, muscle mass loss, the just eating the metabolic engineering diet, you're losing more fat than Ozempic and gaining lean body mass, not losing it. That's what you want. So again, it's, it's saying, how do I get rid of body fat? Yep. Or weight? Try the Venus de Milo diet. It's over and done with. <laughs> Two, before you think about Ozempic, say, is there some alternative? Because I don't want to lose lean body mass, and I want to lose body fat at the fastest possible rate. We've had the published data. There's nothing, nothing in the medical, science, in medical literature that indicates that any other dietary program, Ozempic or a diet X, Y, and Z, basically all of them, when you lose weight, you lose lean body mass. In our study, you lose fat and you gain lean body mass. And I don't think you can really expect to go on some of these drugs without doing dietary change. Like it's just not, it's not going to happen. And the other thing I wanted to mention about that study, Dr. Sears, is we also saw a dramatic decrease in insulin resistance. So for people who are using these drugs to lose weight, but also improve their blood sugar, they're going to see that too. Oh, exactly. And, and this is the really key aspect. It's not basically looking to lose weight. It's looking to reprogram your metabolism. And in going a little deeper in detail, it's activating the master switch of metabolism. It's called AMPK. Now, AMPK will basically do all the good things. It will burn fat faster. It will basically slow down the body's production of cholesterol. It will reduce inflammation. But you need enough protein to also maintain mm -hmm. uh, your lean body mass as you're losing the excess body fat. So it takes a, a little effort, but not much. But mm -hmm. you're not going to get the pancreatitis. You're not going to get the thyroid cancer. You're not going to get basically the paralysis of the stomach and the gut. Say, okay, maybe that's not a bad alternative compared to my weekly injection of Ozempic forever. Yeah, I, th I think the uh, the side effects are definitely a reason to uh, to pause for sure. But you know, this is such a hot topic, Dr. Sears, and I know many people are considering it. This is you know highly searched on Google. You know, each month in terms of the weight loss drugs and stuff. So um, I really appreciate you uh, sharing your insights today into to weight loss drugs. So thanks for being with me. Thank you. For more on this topic and many others on the signs of wellness, go to drsears.com.